Hello, Chemistry 130L. In today's experiment, we're going to be discussing the qualitative synthesis of aspirin. Okay, what does it mean for something to be qualitative? So in science, we can look at things in either a quantitative manner or a qualitative manner. In a quantitative manner, we're trying to quantify something about whatever it is we're doing. So we're taking numerical data. In a qualitative study, we're just looking at did something happen? So in this particular experiment, we're going to be using pH by using pH paper and some iron three chloride tests uh, to see color changes to see if we indeed have what we're looking for. All right, well, we're synthesizing aspirin. So prior to our modern aspirin, what people used to do way back when is they would take willow bark and they would extract from willow bark a compound that was known to ease pain and ease fevers. And so what they would do is they would put the willow bark um, and they would steep it and make a tea and then they would give um, the person that was ailing this tea that was made from willow bark. Now, over time, it was shown that this particular tea, though, did sometimes irritate people's stomachs. So they wanted to create a compound that would not be as irritable, but would still do a good job easing pain and easing fevers. And so this scientist named Hoffman looked into, well, all right, the compound in willow bark that eases this pain and eases fevers is called salicylic acid. And it's a phenol. It's got this hydroxyl group. So a hydroxyl group is going to have an OH there, okay? Which, that's a really funky H. Let me redraw that. And so what he wanted to do is to replace that hydroxyl group with something else that wouldn't irritate as much. So he did a reaction called a Fister, uh, Fischer esterification, I can't speak today, uh, where he replaced that hydroxyl group with something else. And that compound is known as acetyl salicylic acid. And that is what is inside of aspirin. It's the active component. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to look at um, known compounds of salicylic acid and acetyl salicylic acid and test those both with pH paper and with our iron free chloride. And then we're going to extract from willow bark that compound, that salicylic acid, test that, and then do an acid catalyzed Fischer esterification. Okay, so we're using acetic acid. So an acid catalyzed reaction means that we have excess proton hanging around because acids have that H plus, okay? And so that H plus is able to interact with um, an oxygen and get the reaction going. And so our acetic acid today is going to be our acid catalyst in order to uh, fuel our reaction and make our acetyl salicylic acid from our willow bark. So what you will need is your lab protocol. And then you don't need anything from any of the general equipment kits today. You just need the bag that's marked qualitative synthesis of aspirin. Now I've already opened mine up because your willow bark needs to steep in the ethanol for at least a half an hour before you start messing with it. And so I've had mine sitting for a while. That way I can, um, in a timely manner, finish the video. But inside this bag, you'll find a stir rod. Now the stir rod is really small and thin. It comes wrapped in some green bubble paper. I would highly recommend that you use some scissors to cut the tape on the green bubble paper so that you don't accidentally break your stir rod. Okay, you'll have some pipettes. You'll have this tiny little spoon. There'll be three bottles of chemicals, some ethanol, some iron three chloride, and the acetic acid. Um, one of your envelopes is going to be your willow bark, and then you'll have some salicylic acid, some acetyl salicylic acid, and some pH paper, okay? The other thing you have in there will be a well plate. Now, when you turn to your protocol, it has everything listed out for you, and then you'll also want some blank white paper and a permanent marker. The reason why you want the blank white paper is we're looking at color changes in some of these wells. And these color changes are going to be much easier to see if you have a piece of white paper underneath. Uh, normally, you know, in the lab, we do things on a black bench top. And that can be really difficult to see color changes, especially uh, very light color changes, depending on what you're looking at, um, or even dark ones, just depending, because that black is going to heavily influence the color that comes through. Um, just like if I were to do this on my green here, it would be very difficult for me to see 
uh, correctly color changes that are occurring inside my well plate. All right, now your well plate, there's a diagram um, on the first page of your protocol showing you A1, B1, C1, D1, et cetera. When you look at your well plate along the side, so there's the well plate is gonna be curved on one end when you take the lid off and um, squared off on the other end. So the curved end will be the six, the squared off end will be the one. And then as you read down, it says A, B, C, D, and then you've got the one, two, three, four, five, six. So the welds are already um, marked so that you can find what you're doing easily based on our diagram right here. Okay, all right, before we go any further, we wanna make sure that we have our PPE on. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap up my lab coat and then I'll put on my gloves and my goggles and we will go forth and take a look at this experiment. My goggles on. We get a good pair of gloves out. Okay. All right, there's one glove. And there is my other glove. Okay, so again, we're going to first look at our known compounds. So what we're going to do is we're going to, in our first two wells, we're gonna add the solid salic acid and acetyl salic acid. So I'm gonna shake down my envelopes. I'm gonna tear open. Oops, I didn't tear down far enough, okay down a little bit further and right open my envelope there we go okay and i'm going to use my spoon to get out one mini spoon of the salicylic acid i'm going to put that in well a1 okay and then so i don't spill this everywhere i'm going to fold it over and crease it so that it stays shut Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with the acetyl salicylic acid. Rip that open. Okay. And then in well A2, use the mini spoon and put the acetyl salicylic acid. And then in well A6 is where I will take that willow bark, okay, or where I, where I already took the willow bark. And I don't know if you can see on the video, but here I'll bring my well plate over closer to the camera. Okay. And so here was my willow bark that I then covered in ethanol that I've been letting sit. Okay, so I'll bring this back over here. All right, so I've got my components in there. Okay, I'm gonna add ethanol again. I added ethanol to cover the willow bark in well A6. Now in wells B1 and B2, I'm gonna add 15 drops of ethanol. So I'm gonna count my 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. And then in well B3, I'm gonna do 10 drops of the iron three chloride. Okay, we wanna shake this bottle because it may have been a little bit saturated, so there might be some solid stuff in there. Okay, so B3, I'm gonna do 10 drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and then to B4, I'm gonna do 10 drops of the acetic acid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. All right. Okay, so now again, I'm letting my willow bark soak. So I'm going to look at my known chemicals before I go back to my willow bark. Okay, so I'm going to mark three of the pipettes. I'm going to mark one with ETOH for ethanol. So that's what we use our permanent marker for. Okay, I'm going to mark one. FeCl3 for iron three chloride. And then the last one, we're going to use AA as an abbreviation for acetic acid. 
Okay, so I'm going to take my ethanol pipette and I am going to transfer 10 drops of ethanol from well B1 to A1. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay. Now I'm going to use some pH paper. So on your white paper, what you can do is we've got a pH um, chart here that will let you decode what colors are on your pH paper. So I'm gonna set that by my well paper. And then I'm gonna be doing four pH tests in this experiment. So from my pH paper, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna put out four pieces of paper. Now in a lab class, a lot of times to save our pH paper so we don't go through it as fast, because if you're just going to be putting a small drop from a stir rod onto it, you can actually drop on both sides of the pH paper um, so that you only have to use one strip. Um, for this, because this pH paper is for this experiment specifically, I will go ahead and use one strip of pH paper for each um, thing. And I'll go ahead and stop for a moment and take a picture of what this looks like right here. And I will add that to the Canvas module so you can see the way I have everything all set up so far. Okay, all right. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the stir rod, I'm gonna stir around a little bit very carefully. Okay, and then I'm gonna get some on the end of my stir rod and then I touched it to my pH paper, okay? And if you're having a hard time getting a good dot, you can do it a couple of times, all right? Okay, so there is for our salicylic acid, okay? Now I'm gonna take my ethanol pipette and I'm gonna do 10 drops of ethanol from B2 to A2, okay? Or the acetyl salicylic acid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, and let's do one more drop. Okay. All right, and now we wanna do the same thing. We wanna stir and mix. Okay, so I'm gonna use the other end of the rod now. Once you have stirred and mixed, then you want to touch just like you did before onto the next pH paper. Okay. Now, one thing that can be a little bit um, frustrating is when you contaminate stuff. So I've just used the stir rod, both ends of it, to touch onto this pH paper. Well, I'm going to have to do a couple more of those when we actually start messing with our willow bark. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take an empty container. Okay, so you can get a beaker or something else out of your kit. Um, and I'm gonna drop some ethanol onto the edge of my stir rod on both ends, just a little bit to clean it off. Now, my stir rod is clean and it's ready to go for my next pH test because if I were to leave it as is, okay, I might have contaminated my results because what if when I do my next set of tests, I'm actually getting what my stir rod had coated on it from previous experiments instead of what I need to test next. So you wanna clean that off with some of your ethanol. All right, okay, so I've done that. And then uh, we wanna make sure we record our observations. Remember when you are recording observations, we are going to use ink. Okay, so we'll record our observations in our data table. All right, and then now we're gonna take our iron three chloride pipette and we're gonna do one drop into well A1, okay? And we're gonna do one drop into well A2. And then we'll record our results in our data table. What you can do is you can carefully shake your uh, well plate a little bit to make sure it all mixes together, okay? All right, so now we should have a bunch of different colors going on and we can record our results. Okay, so my willow bark has been soaking long enough in ethanol that I can go ahead and proceed on to the salicylic acid and the synthesis of the acetyl salicylic acid. 
If you have not taken a half hour by this point in your experiment, you need to pause, let your willow bark soak for a little bit longer, and then come back to it after it's been in for a half an hour. Again, I prepped mine ahead of time and let it soak. That way I could continue on with my video. Um, mine's been soaking since about 5.30 and my clock says it's 6.06, .06, so we're good to go. All right, so now I'm gonna take my ethanol pipette and I'm gonna transfer 10 drops of this to well A3, okay? So I'm gonna pull this up and transfer my 10 drops, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, okay? All right, then I'm gonna take my glass stir rod again, get some on the end of that, touch that onto my pH paper, okay? All right, and then I'm gonna take my iron three chloride pipette, do the same thing I did before, take a single drop, and I'm gonna put that into that well. And once again, I can shake it to get it to mix, okay? And then I can record my results in my data table. Okay, and now my last part is I want to do my acetyl salicylic acid. So I'm gonna take my ethanol pipette again, drop some. And into well A4 this time, I'm gonna do 10 drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay. All right. Um, I'm gonna transfer my one drop of my iron three chloride. Okay. Shake that around a little bit. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna take my acetic acid pipette and from the well that I have my acetic acid, I'm going to transfer all of it. So I'm gonna suck it all up. Okay, now I'm gonna transfer it dropwise into that well A4. Okay, so I'm not gonna shoot it all in all at once. I'm just gonna transfer it dropwise and then I can see what happens as I add it. Okay. So in your observations, you might wanna write down what's happening as you add it. All right, I'll swirl that around a bit, okay? And then the other end of my glass stir rod, I'm gonna dip into that well, get some on, and then touch it to my pH paper, okay? And then I can record my data in my data table. So we've got, again, you've got the indicator here to let you know, you know, you can compare your colors that you see on your paper to the colors on that and decide whether or not um, you have pH one or pH two, pH three, et cetera. Now, if you have a color that you think is somewhere in between two of the colors, you can go ahead and record your pH. Is, you know, say you think it's between one and two, okay? You can record your pH as 1.5. Or you think it's between two and three, record your pH as 2.5, but try to get what you think is the closest color match there um, so that you've got a good representation of your pH. Okay. And then again, you will fill out your data table and then you can clean up your experiment. And so again, this is just a qualitative determination not quantitative, so we're using that iron three chloride and we're using pH to compare to our known solutions to try to figure out if we did indeed manage to produce the compound that we were trying to produce. And that is our experiment for um, this week. So hopefully you'll find it interesting that again, this is the stuff that you know is in your medicine cabinet in your house that you take when um, you need something, some, you know, to reduce a fever or to reduce aches and pains, or it's one of the compounds that maybe you might also have, um, Tylenol or ibuprofen or, um, those other compounds as well, depending on what you have stocked in your medicine cabinet. So that is our synthesis of aspirin. Um, so again, hopefully you enjoy this. I think it's interesting to make a compound and then test to see if I actually produced it.